Hello everybody, today I'm here to talk about Slime Doesn't Pay, a newer book by R.L. Stein um, just came out, and this one actually has kind of an interesting story behind it. Uh, for some of you who might not know, Slime Doesn't Pay is a winning title that was part of a contest way back in the day for Goosebumps book, where essentially these kids sent in their title submissions for this contest, and R.L. Stein chose this one as the winner, Slime Doesn't Pay. And the idea behind it was, was that he was supposed to write a Goosebumps book based on this title or using this title. And for whatever reason, he never did. Uh, I guess it just got shoved into the drawer and forgotten about. <laughs> and years later, um, so I guess somewhat recently now, somebody reached out to R.L. Stein. I don't remember the exact story or the names of the people involved. Uh, but somebody reached out to R.L. Stein on social media and I think mentioned this or title or this lost contest or brought it up to him. And he basically responded with this book. He essentially wrote a book, finally, all of these years later based on this title, which is really cool. It's kind of interesting and cool that he did that. I feel like it kind of shows that he cares about the fans. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of a cool little fun fact about this book. And it's not really a Goosebumps book. It's just kind of a standalone story. Uh, it's released, published by Blackstone Publishing. And I have here with me a very nice hardcover edition. You can get this book in hardcover or paperback. Um, this is a really, really nice, like, high-quality uh, hardcover edition. And it is also signed, which is really cool. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. I've turned off my ring light today just to try something a little bit different, see if maybe there's not as much of a glare. I do have like a lamp over here. Hopefully that is going to provide enough lighting. Um, but yeah, it says this limited signed edition has been specially bound by the publisher and it has his signature there. It was a little bit more expensive for this copy, but that's fine with me. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty excited to have this book in my collection. So yeah. Um, so what is this book about exactly? So it's about our main character named Amy. And she has a bratty little brother. And I mean really, really bratty brother. <laughs> so Arl Stein is kind of uh, notorious for having like bratty characters in his books. Uh, both in Fear Street and Goosebumps. Kids that are just really mean. And just like pulling pranks on other kids. And just being brats in general. And this kid, Arnie, uh, Amy's little brother. He is probably one of the worst uh, kids ever <laughs> that R.L. Stein has written about in terms of just the things that he does and the way that he acts. It is just, it is awful. Um, it's almost a little bit too much. It's kind of hard to read through. And coupled with the fact that all the characters in the book, in this book, just kind of put up with him. Uh, his sister, his parents, um, he doesn't get punished or anything. He, everyone just kind of puts up with the way that he is. And a lot of this book is just kind of Arnie pulling pranks on his sister Amy, uh, just being mean to her, just doing all these different things. He even, um, him and his sister go to the mall at one point and go into the, like this electronics or game store. And he even puts something, I don't remember what it was, some kind of tablet or video game console or something. It's like sneaks it inside of her bag or her purse. And like, yeah, it's like attempted theft, essentially. Like, this kid is awful. <laughs> so the majority of this book, or over the first half of it, like well over 100 pages. Um, this book is 240 pages, by the way, which is pretty long. But it's also interrupted by a lot of illustrations that take up a lot of page space. And then we also even have a couple, of like, full page illustrations. Or there's a few of these throughout. So yeah, and then the font is also pretty big and um, has a lot of spacing in between it. So even though this book is 240 pages, uh, it reads about the same length as maybe a little bit longer than a Goosebumps book. It was it's still a very quick read. Uh, but yeah, anyway, basically the majority of this book is just Arnie being a brat um, for like the full whole first half of this book. And then we get to the part two of this book. And Amy decides to get revenge on Arnie, which is uh, long overdue <laughs> and well-deserved, uh, in my opinion. And the way she decides to get revenge 
is with this blue slime that she saw on a YouTube video. And what happens with this blue slime, uh, there's some unexpected results, I guess we'll say. Uh, I can't really talk too much more about that without spoiling it. And things get a little bit crazy after that. So yeah, that's pretty much slime doesn't pay. Now, I know that doesn't really sound like much, given the, given the length of this book. And it's really not, to be honest. <laughs> this is a pretty simple and straightforward story. I think it is a little bit drawn out. Uh, but before I get too much talking about what I didn't like about this book, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I did like about it, because I don't think this book is terrible. Uh, it definitely wasn't the best, but I think it does have some redeeming qualities. Uh, so what I did like about this book is there's some things set up early on in the book that seem kind of random, and it, it makes you question like what kind of book or what kind of story this is telling exactly, what kind of genre this fits into. And those little bits and pieces we get in the beginning, there's like some hints at some supernatural stuff going on, but they're just kind of introduced and then sort of put to the sidelines. We don't really get too much detail um, according to these supernatural elements, um, but it, it kind of creates this little bit of mystery. It has you wondering like what's going on exactly, you know, what, what is this? And then later on, we do get a little bit of payoff. Things are explained in part two of the book. And I kind of like how that's set up and then how the role that that takes place in the later half of the book. And I do like the second half of this book. Uh, I like the climax, the action we get at the end. Uh, it's pretty action-packed. Nothing too like crazy or violent. This is definitely targeted towards a younger audience, about the same target audience as Goosebumps books, like middle grade. Uh, but the second part of this book was just a lot of fun. There's a lot of stuff going on. I like the twist that we got, even though, again, I know I say this with like every R.L. Stein book that I read, but it was a little bit predictable, but I still, I still enjoyed it nonetheless. And overall, it was just, it was a decent book. Again, uh, most of my praise goes towards like the back half of the book when things finally start to get rolling. But yeah, it was, it was a decent book, I guess. <laughs> um, nothing terrible. So what I didn't like about it is that the whole first half of the book, while not bad, you know, I don't mind reading this about this bratty kid. It's setting up the story for what happens later on. And we get some explanation as to why this kid is the way he is. He's not just being a jerk and disobedient for no reason. There is a little bit of an explanation later on. Uh, but it's much longer than it needs to be. Again, the first part of this book is well over 100 pages. And it just feels very repetitive. Uh, it's just scenes, endless, continuous scenes of Arnie just doing these horrendous things. Uh, it talks about him literally bullying other kids at school, injuring other kids at school, playing soccer. He's like intentionally um, kicking the ball, the soccer ball into their faces and giving them bloody noses. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, there's attempted theft with him at the mall in the store. He's just doing a lot of terrible things. And it's just over and over and over again, every single chapter. <laughs> so the whole first part of the book is a little bit repetitive. I think it's just laid on a little bit too thick. I feel like some of that could have been cut out. We didn't need, you know, 120 something pages of that. Um, and then, you know, I guess that's really just my main complaint that I have with it. And part of it too is that it is just kind of an overused formula a little bit. In both Goosebumps and Fear Street, R.L. Stein is known for doing these sort of uh, pranks and mean character uh, types, stereotypes, to where he's using this as like a means to set up a revenge plot later on, uh, only for the revenge plot to backfire in some way and make matters even worse. It's a, it's a formula that we've seen done before. Um, to echo my friend Zach over at Shadyside Library, uh, he has a review of this book up as well. I'll post a link to the, his video down in the description. He's a good friend of mine, a uh, fellow Goosebumps YouTuber. Go check him out. Uh, I believe he said the same thing, that this book is just seems a little bit too familiar. It's definitely a type of story that we've seen before in both Goosebumps and Fear Street books. Uh, but I do kind of like 
like I mentioned earlier, the second half of this book, things get a little bit more fun, a little bit more interesting. I kind of like the explanation that we get um, pertaining to the little brother and then the slime and how that plays a role in the story. Uh, one other thing, too, that is a little bit of a disappointment is the slime itself doesn't necessarily play a huge role. Uh, the title slime doesn't pay almost... I don't know. It just doesn't feel like it fits the story. I kind of like the title. I like the whole aesthetic to this book, the cover. The title is, is really cool. I can see how that won the contest, how R.L. Stein chose that. But the slime itself doesn't play like a pivotal or like just super important role in the story. If you've read this book, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's just kind of there. It's not... I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's another thing that just kind of bothered me a little bit about it. I was hoping that this book was going to be, you know, about like this monster slime uh, that has some kind of dangerous effect to it, kind of like a monster blood type of thing or something along those lines. But it really doesn't. I mean, it, there's kind of a reason um, that it's used in the story and what it does, but it's not super important. It's not like a huge part of the story. So yeah, that was another thing that bothered me a little bit about it. Um, overall, those are really just my main two complaints. Uh, the positives... And the negatives, neither one of them were like super heavy either way on the scale. Overall, I feel like this book was just kind of okay. I decided to give it a two and a half out of five stars. It's not really that bad. It's not really that great either. But I do think it's really cool that R.L. Stein has finally written the, a book with this title all of these years later. And even if the story isn't really the best, I'm glad to have this in my collection because... This is just such a gorgeous and high quality book and it's also signed by R.L. Stein. So yeah, I can't complain about that. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, that slime doesn't pay. Uh, if you've read this book, let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. Uh, again, I think I gave it probably like a two and a half out of five stars. So very middle of the road. It seems like I've had a lot of like just kind of mediocre, decent books from R.L. Stein lately. It seems like everything... I've read by him lately. A lot of these new releases have been like three-star books. So <laughs> I need to read something by him soon that's just a banger. Something that's just a fire, like really good book. Because <laughs> it's been a while since I've read one that I've like really, really enjoyed. So I don't know. I need to find something soon. But yeah, that slime doesn't pay. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.